Good morning, everyone. Sorry, I'm off to a bit of a late start. Uh, there's always a whole bunch of things that I need to do before I go live. I need to pull, well, first of all, I need to clean up my work area. <laughs> It was so messy and crazy this morning. And uh, then I need to make sure I have all the things kind of some things pre-cut. Um, and today's project involves it's a treat holder. Actually, it's three treat holders. Um, and uh, I had to pull some candy so I could show you what would fit. And so look, I'm running around like a mad woman. And it, I always think I have more time, but um, there's so many moving pieces to running an online business and creating things for you. There's the creativity side and there's the business side um, because I want you to be able to get to the products. I need to make sure that a lot of the things are still available. So my little brain was exploding this morning. So I'm sorry I'm late, but I'm so glad to see that um, some of you are here this morning. You hung in past my little lateness. And if you're watching this as a recording later on, um, uh, please feel free to uh, jump past my blah, blah, blah and jump right into the project because I know you're gonna love this project because Sometimes at Christmas, you know, we do want to make elaborate fun surprises for people, but sometimes we need to give a little something to our coworkers. Sometimes we need to have like a little basket of little tiny gifts um, to hand out if someone stops by. It's just nice to have some favors and, you know, to give up to your neighbors. And you want these things to be not too elaborate because you don't want the other person to feel obligated to give you something back. The whole idea, I think, um, behind Christmas gifts originally was to, you know, give something from the heart, but not an obligation, right? We don't want people to have to give us something back. I think most of us are willing to just give <laughs> and that's the fun part for us, right? And so if we give a huge elaborate gift, then it kind of sets this kind of obligation. Well, these treat favors today will not be that. They are just fun and they are easy because we are gonna use the pillow box, the pretty pillow box dies from Stampin' Up. So I'm gonna switch over to my other camera so I can show you because it's kind of hard to hold everything up here. So just stay with me. Oh, I think, I think my other camera is working. No, 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 it's not. Why is my other camera not working? Okay, let's see, I think I've got, let me just plug this in and it's not going on here. Hmm, don't you just love it when technology is not working? Let's make sure all my connectors are good. This connector is good. Huh, so weird. Okay, just hang on. I'm gonna switch the ports I put things in because sometimes this little guy is a little tricky. So I'm gonna lose sound for a second, okay? Huh. That is so weird. My camera is not switchy switching. Okay, I'm gonna try this one more time. I'm gonna plug this in one more time. Hmm. All right, everything's connected here. Let me try turning things on and off again. I've never had this problem before, so it's always fun when you have to troubleshoot your little problems. Okay, let's see if that activates anything. Hmm. That is not doing anything either. Oh, how frustrating. Oh, wait, wait. There we go. Oh my gosh. Yay. Wow. So sorry. 
sometimes things just don't go the way you want them. But okay, I don't know what did that, but it rebooted for whatever reason. Okay, so let me show you these little pretty pillow boxes. Um, the first one we're going to make is this little purse. I thought it would really be cute to create these little purses. If we're giving them out to um, some ladies, girls, these would be super cute. And all we do is have some little ribbon um, uh, on the back and it's just kind of knotted in there. So that's one type of pillow box. Then we've got this pillow box and this one stays closed by the ribbon sliding on and off. So you can slide it off. I'm not going to slide it all the way off because with this one, it's kind of, it's a little bit harder to feed it back on once you got it off. So, you know, the person with this one will slide it off and then this one won't be one where you can like slide it on and off easy peasy again. Once it's off, it's going to be a little harder to get this ribbon back on. So that's why I invented this third option. This ribbon ties around this way and we slide down this way and then this little box will open. And so I really like the closure on this one um, because you can kind of, you know, just kind of slide it down. On this one, I'd use some Velcro um, mini um, dots and this one, I'll just tell you right now, it's easier once you have some things inside it so you can press against it and then it will stay closed. If it's empty, this is like a pillow, so you have nothing to press against to get that good adhesion. So I am going to show you how to make all of these and I'm gonna start off with this little guy right here. All right, so these are the pretty pillow box dies that I'm gonna be using. They come with this uh, die that creates the pillow box, plus you get this little tag this label, this label, these little flowers, and I don't know if you notice, but aren't these little uh, poinsettia flowers really cute? Well, guess what? You're going to be able to make them um, from the dies in here. Um, and so this is just three different um, cuts. You use two of these, you've got two of them, so you can run them through right at the same time and then you that two of them create the little flower and then I ran through one more time an old olive and that created the little tiny leaves for there. So that's all included. And if you wanted to get fancier, these three um, can be put on the die right there and create a fancy little um, piece at the front. I am not gonna show that today, but um, those are options for you as well. Okay, and then I just wanted to share with you this A Wish for Everything stamp set. And I'm going to be using the Merry and Christmas out of here and this little greeting, A Merry Little Wish for Lots of Joy this season. So these are really great. Um, this covers a bunch of different holidays. So if you don't already have this um, stamp set, I highly recommend it to cover different holidays that you could wish. Oh, also I think it has, it has a Hanukkah one too. So if you wanted to do it for um, a happy Hanukkah, there's a happy in there and Hanukkah. So that would also be a little option for you for that. Okay, let's start off with cutting our pretty pillow box. And I've got just my regular base plate my number tooth and die adapter, a clear plate. Then I've got my paper. Let's talk quickly about the paper. I cut it to four and a half by six inches and that's kind of the perfect size for running through the pillow box. Today I'm going to be using the Heartwarming Hugs Designer Series Paper. It comes in all these great neutral patterns. And so you're gonna love this paper. Um, the original ones I did, these ones are actually from the gingerbread and peppermint paper. So I wanted to give you two different options for paper because I know sometimes at this time of year, um, we uh, don't, um, 
uh, we get a back order going on. So either one of these papers would work really well. So hopefully by the time you order, if you need to order, um, one of these papers will be available and they both have um, kind of red and green patterns on one side. This paper actually has cookies and candy on the other side, but usually on one side there's like a neutral pattern, so you can definitely do your neutrals if you would like them. This paper here, this one pretty much is kind of neutrals on both sides, so heartwarming hugs if you're a neutrals person um, or just want red and green, this probably would be um, more up your alley. The nice thing is when you go into the Stampin' Up! store, you can see all the patterns of the paper um, shown. So you'll be able to see what you're getting. Okay, so I've got it all lined up and I'm going to run this through. And I want to make a little mention because sometimes all of our different die cutting machines, they're calibrated a little differently. So for my machine, it works perfectly just to do the regular sandwich and run it through to get your um, die cut. But what if you found that um, you are getting cut right through? Sometimes the score lines will cut right through your paper if your machine's a little different. So in that case, what I would recommend just quickly, normally it should work fine, but I would just use my number one plate. I would omit number two, put a clear plate on the bottom, then do your paper, your die. And then instead of using a clear plate for the top, use the thick die, um, the thick embossing uh, folder um, plate um, for your top. So basically you're doing a number one, a number three clear plate, your paper, your die, and then the number four um, embossing folder adapter. So that's what you'll use if you're going to have, if you have trouble with your die cutting all the way through. It's just a matter of switching your sandwich. Um, die cutting machines can be calibrated to kind of all different um, um, ways. So sometimes you just need to adjust your sandwich. Okay. I'm going to put this over here. So now let's fold this piece along the score lines. So the best way to do this is go to a window the first time and look for the lines because there's two lines that go across. Okay, and you just want to fold those. And then you're going to come on the side and there's kind of a curve right here. So if you're using designer series paper, this is really easy to fold. If you're using cardstock, it's a little harder. And if you're using cardstock, what, what I recommend is going the die back and forth so you can deepen those score lines a little bit. You might not want to do that with um, paper though, because that's when you can start to get um, those lines deeper and then they might want to uh, the paper might break along that score line instead of just scoring it. Okay, so this is basically your whole piece. It's really fast if you're not talking like I am. And I like to put the Tombow or the adhesive on the sides in the middle, um, on these middle pieces, okay? Because I like to have this nice fold on the front. If you put them on the end here, you're gonna have this edge right here sticking out. So I always say put it on the outside middle ones. And I just try and remember that. And I'm gonna put these tips in my project sheet. I haven't talked about my project sheet yet. If you would like a project sheet for the um, things I'm making today, you know what? I just forgot one little thing. I want to put some little holes in my piece. So let me do that before I glue. I'm just going to avoid my glue for a moment. So on the back here, I'm just going to fold this and I want to put two pencil dots where I'm going to put my ribbon holes because I'm creating that purse first. 
So do you see right there? You want it on the back side, just below the, the score line, not on the score line, just a bit below, like maybe an eighth of an inch, and then just a little bit in. And then you're going to take a handheld punch. This is a 1 8 inch circle punch. You could also use a crocodile. Use the smallest hole and then use that little pencil mark as a guide to punch a couple of holes. Those are the ribbon holes. It's far easier to do this when your project is not assembled yet. So I'll make sure I have that on my project sheet, which I was just telling you about. Um, my project sheet will come out on Saturday, so you need to be on my email list to get that. And so I'm just bringing these in a little bit. And I'm just pressing down a little bit on here. And then what I'll do is I'll go over to the side and just kind of press in here. I'm putting my pointer finger in there and just kind of pressing down and just making sure that this adheres nicely. With the designer series paper, it really does adhere nicely. It folds nicely, it bends nicely. Okay, so now we need a piece of ribbon and I need about a 12 inch length for my purse. So I'll just cut that off. This ribbon right here is the Real Red double stitched satin ribbon. And this works really nice for Christmas projects. It's nice and bright. I'm going to put a knot in one end and I wanna try and put that knot as far down as I can. I hope this was the one that I said. I, all the ribbon lengths are different. I think this one was the one that was 12 inches. If not, it would be nine inches, but we'll see. If it looks too long, I'll adjust. Okay, so I'm gonna feed this um, from the inside and the knot is gonna be on the inside right here. Okay, like that. And then, you know what? I think this one was supposed to be nine inches. Okay, so we're gonna shorten this. Scratch the 12 inches, let's say nine inches for the ribbon handle, and I'll make sure that's corrected on the project sheet. Oh, <laughs> you need to feed it through first. Let's do this. Feed it through. And when you're doing the, the notch, you're gonna wanna feed it all the way through as far as it will go. And I'm just straightening it out here. Okay, and then if it's nine inches, it's gonna be probably about here. So I'm normally with a nine inch length, you're gonna put the knot right on the end of the ribbon, but I am putting mine up a little bit because I miscalculated. It's a different piece of ribbon that's nine, um, that's 12 inches versus the nine inches. And then I'll just cut that and pull that. Okay, yeah, so nine inches is a good length for a little handle. And that's what it looks like, okay? All right, okay, so for the front, I'm gonna use these little um, 3M fasteners. And let me pull them off. I'm going to put one on here. And the other one on here. Okay, and then I'm just kind of keeping this kind of bulked out so it kind of curves out and then I'm gonna press down and then lift off and then just kind of give it an extra press with adhesive. And as I said before, um, with these little Velcro dots, um, you need to have some sort of candy in there to press down on. So put something in there 
and then you can close it up nicely again, okay? So then let's decorate the front. And what I did earlier, so you wouldn't have to watch me, is I ran through two of the bigger flowers with some basic white cardstock. And I'm gonna show you how I put my flower together. I just put a little dot in the center of Tombow. And then I line this up. Okay, then the top leaves are gonna be tucked underneath. So I kind of count, there's six petals. One, and then I kind of tuck them down. Two, three, four, five, and then six. And so they kind of interlock and that kind of gives them a nice little depth shape. So you don't have to necessarily do that. You could just glue them on top of each other. But when you interlock the two together, that's kind of what it creates. Then I cut a third one out of old olive. And to create these leaves, I'm just gonna pull off two of the leaves. So I'm gonna pull off one leaf and then I'm going to count over one and then pull off another one. So that's what it looks like. Three on one end and one on the other. And I'm gonna use this one petal end and I'm gonna to put Tombow on it and then I can, I've got a little bit more of a space to tuck everything behind. So that single petal or leaf gets a little Tombow on it like that and then I can stick it behind here and then it has quite a bit of stuff to tuck everything behind. And so you can see that's what it looks like on the back. And then I'm going to put a little Tombow on here and add this over here. So on this one, you know, now that I'm looking at my little flower, I probably could have done a red flower on here. And I'm just, I wanna compare this to this one, um, just so you can see. With this one, I definitely needed a white flower on here because of the red. I didn't wanna do red on red. This one, since I was doing green, I could have gone red. I just kind of noticed that right now, but that's kind of just something that you can um, play with and decide. Then I'll take one of these gilded gems and pop it right in the center, like that. And that is the little purse, easy peasy. And um, I could, I didn't put a greeting on this one. I could, I could have probably popped one on here in the corner, maybe with this little guy right here, cutting a little die shape and having um, Merry Christmas down in there if I wanted to. Um, but right now I just kind of kept these very simple on here with uh, those little flowers. All right, let me show you how I do the other two. So I actually already ran through um, two of these. So let's go ahead and adhere them again. Um, I folded them already. And then remember, we do the middle piece, middle piece. And then you just bring it together tuck those sides in without getting glue on your fingers. Okay, and then slide them in. I'm gonna set this aside for a second and we'll do that one last. All right, so this one, I'm just kind of pinching the sides again And then we'll bring in some ribbon. Pop 
this out. And I'm going to cut this and then I'm going to measure it so we know how much ribbon I used. So, this one, well, it's about 10 inches. Let me say 10 inches for this one. So this one was nine inches, this one was 10 inches, and then I think the last one uh, is 12 inches. That would make sense. So I'm gonna tie a knot. Okay, you'll wanna put your candy in here first um, if you're going to tie this one because it's gonna be hard to slide it on and off again. So. Uh, the last thing we do, I'm going to show you um, what kind of candy can fit in there. But let's pretend there's candy in here already. I'm going to clamp down with my locking tweezers. These are just a handy um, tool that I got um, at, um, at the beading section of a hobby store. I'm going to tie this little knot here. All right, so once you've got that situated, you're gonna wanna angle cut those ends a little bit. All right, and then this set also comes with a little tag piece right here. So I already cut one of those little tag pieces right here. And I took the Merry and the Christmas from the A Wish for Everything stamp set. This is my Real Red ink pad. And first of all, I'm going to stamp Christmas down at the bottom. And then I'm going to stamp Merry down right on top of that, okay? I don't know if you can see that, but just Merry and Christmas down at the bottom of the tag. I'm leaving a little bit of space so that I can add my little flower. And basically, I did the same thing with this little red flower as I did with my white one, except I used two of the smaller um, red flowers. So I used real red cardstock. And just so you remember, these are the two little dies and these are the two big ones. I used two of the little ones and um, in real red and one of them in old olive. And I did the same thing as I did with the white flower. And then I can just add this onto here. Kind of turning it just so it sticks on to the side of here. And then come in with a, where are my gems? I've got one sheet that's kind of already going. And then I'll take one of the smaller gilded gems. I like these because they're neutral and they work with everything. So pick up a package of these and you're going to be good for your Christmas projects. It's one of those ones that I reach for a lot. And then to hook this little tag on, you might go, oh, Brenda, you didn't put the tag on. Well, I actually don't like to love to run my tag through the ribbon. You could, you could definitely. I just like to cut a little slit in the ribbon right about there. Okay, or the tag. So then I kind of come around here and then I feed that on here. I know the tag could theoretically tear off then, but um, I kind of like doing that. Pop that out. And then I can kind of put my ribbon where I tie it. Um, I can push it up just a little wee bit. And then just hold on. I like to have that kind of, so I can put it on afterwards. Okay, there we go. And I think it helps, you can maneuver it a little bit better. You can turn it and, and position it however you want. So that's the little one with the little tag that hangs off of it. And this ribbon can slide off. It's a little harder to get it back on. All right, let me show you the last one. And for this one, I'm going to have to create a little bit 
of a front flap. So let me show you how I did that. I'm bringing in my die cut machine again. Base plate the same, number one, number two, number three. I need a piece of basic white and I'm gonna come in with my die. This time I just need to cut this top piece so it doesn't even need to be straight or anything. You just need to make sure that that top piece is on there. I just look to see if there's a little white showing right there and then I know that I'm gonna have that whole piece in the window that I need it and then I'm just gonna run that through So you can see right here, you've got that little score line. I don't know if I can get it. You can kind of see that nice little line right there. So what I'll do is I'm gonna cut along that line with my paper snips. All right, that's gonna be that front flap. And then this time, I'm going to use this greeting right here. Make sure it's the right way. And then I'm gonna come down here and you could shove it like to one side or the other side. So let's just shove it a little bit to the side so we have room for our flower. Okay, so I just stamped that right on there. Close this up, and now let's bring this other die cut piece that I've already cut and um, already folded, and then again I'll show you how I do this. It's the middle, and the middle, see these are not hard to put together at all, and they've got this nice little edge, so they're just really easy to put together this side and this side and I really do love using Tombow glue because it holds everything together well okay this side it just has to kind of curve together and come together so I'm pressing these now kind of against each other and then I'm just going to come along and press the side make sure it's adhering properly okay so this one needs to go on here and you know what it would have probably been a lot easier if I had adhered it while it was flat right yeah <laughs> okay well I didn't do that so you might not do that either so we're gonna adhere it after it's all ready together so let's just go ahead and adhere this And I can see right here that this is sticking out just a little bit. So we can come around here and just snip off that little white piece a little bit. And there's a little corner sticking out here like that. Okay. All right, so this will curve down like that. And then, you know what? I probably should have not cut off that corner. I think once it folds down, that corner looks a lot better. But that way well, you can learn from me as I'm going along. Because this is only the second time I've made this one. Let's check out my measurements. I think this one's 12 inches. Because I had 12 in my brain for something. 12. Live dangerously snip things off okay yeah this is 12 inches so I'm gonna bring this together and tie a knot right here and then clamp it down with locking tweezers 
And then I'm going to come around here and tie it, tighten it a little bit. Okay. And then I've got ribbon scissors, just scissors that I've designated as use for ribbons. That way they don't get dulled on paper. Okay, so then the last thing I want to do is add this little flower that I created earlier, and it's just going to sit right there. Looks really wonky on the back, doesn't it? But it works because you're not going to see the back. And then I'll just add that right there. And then we'll take some gilded gems, or just one of them and just add that right on to my finger. My fingers are now as sticky as the gilded gems. <laughs> Friday flub day today. Okay. All right, there we go. All right, so then this one just slides down and then you can release the little pouch. So let's have a look and see what will actually fit inside here. I've got some candy that I've pulled out. And let's figure out how many pieces of candy fit in each. So I've got some Starlight Mints. That's one option. So one, two, three. You might be able to even get four in here. Yeah, about four of them, three or four of them fit. Okay, so you can get that in there. Okay, so that's one option. Ghirardelli minis, minis, not the regular size. So for these ones, I would stack two of the minis making sure I'm saying minis a few times because the regular size ones will not fit in here. Um, see how though cute those are? They stack nicely inside of there and then you can close that up. Okay, so that's another option. Uh, Dove chocolate, another option. So Dove chocolates, I think Dove you can only get two in here. Well, Maybe three. Let's have a look and see if I can squeeze a third one in here. Yeah, I think three will fit. Not not as nicely stacked as the Ghirardelli minis. Okay, or do two if you're on a budget. But just to kind of give you a size guy. Um, Hershey's Miniatures. You might notice that only the dark chocolate is left over. Yes, dark chocolate is not my favorite chocolate. So that's the one that gets left over. And that's what is used for my chocolate experimental purposes. So about two Hershey's minis fit in here. Let's see if, oh, maybe I can get three in. I'm going to reposition. All right, it might be a little tight. Definitely two, possibly three, if you can figure out a slightly better configuration than, than mine. But definitely two would fit in there like that. Oh, I wonder if I put one like this. Well, that might work. It's a little bulky. So two or three Hershey's Miniatures. And then Kisses. Let's see how many Kisses will fit in here. One. Two, three, four. Kisses are good, right? <laughs> Their shape allows lots of different. So maybe five, four or five kisses. And you know, um, for Christmas, I would probably get, and this can shove up a little further too. Uh, for Christmas, I would get those um, peppermint kisses. They are so good. If you like the peppermint kisses, so you can, um, add them in there and 
yeah so those are some chocolates that are pretty readily available if you live in the u.s um you can find all of these chocolates probably at your grocery store or any um other um, box store and so let's bring in the different um containers and the two different papers. So I would definitely, see on this one, I would definitely keep those points instead of cutting them off. I don't know what I was thinking. Um, and for this one, um, you can choose the different colors, the red and the green. So there you go. The pillow box is done in three different ways and they're just great because they've got little greetings on them. If you wanted to add a little greeting down here, I think the Merry Christmas would fit. Shall we try that? Oh, let's try it just for the fun of it. I've got a piece of scrap paper here. Let's give it a whirl while we're here see what I can do with this one. See if I can add a greeting easily. Why not, right? Okay. We'll just do it on one. Let's see if Merry and Christmas fits on here. So what I would do is I want this cute little end to be right there. So I'm going to take Christmas and put it right close to the end right there. Okay, I could have moved that down a bit and then move that one on there. So yeah, I could have done a slightly better job stamping that. But let's say that I was brilliant and I had, oh, you know what I could do? I'll stamp it on the other end. Let's make it straighter and move it down a bit. Okay, let's do this one more time. Down here. Okay. And Okay, that's a little better, I think. Okay, now you're, I probably have lost you. But then what I would do is add this on here. I'm just gonna follow the curve of this right here. Just draw on the little curve. And then you could do this um, maybe before you assemble it, I don't know. But this is one way you can do it afterwards. And then you could add that right on there. Oh, isn't that cute? Okay, add a little Tombow. right there and you know what I would have done with this one as I'm experimenting and trying different things um, I probably would have um, used a red flower there so I didn't have white and white so um, you know if I was doing the green one I guess not too much choice on this one because um, you need the white to pop that out, but that's a little way or you can move this over just a little bit more Even if you wanted to right and have the Merry Christmas be a little closer to the edge But that's a way that you could add the Merry Christmas on there or Happy Hanukkah, right? Doesn't have to be Christmas. We can celebrate other holidays as well So just to give you some options about how to put that on there if you want that greeting on there Phew! I think that was probably one of my craziest presentations ever. A lot of backtracking and going um, back and forth. Um, I didn't have my project sheet ready while I was doing this video and you can see right then and there how much a project sheet does help with the actual measurements and, and making things and if you follow along like put the white well, um, top of the the purse on or the top of the this piece 
on before you assemble it. That would be a really great thing to do instead of doing it in the air after the container was already created. So I will make sure that's on the project sheet so when you follow along, your projects get to go faster than mine. So anyway, um, if you loved any of those, I hope that you will um, uh, pop over to my blog and order some of the supplies that you need to make them. And um, I just wanted to let you know, and again, I do not have my host code ready, but you can find it over on my blog. Um, I don't know, for some reason, I deleted it off of my page. It's just gone. It's usually up here. Um, so um, if you um, use my host code and spend $50 with me this month, you are going to get a package of the Garden Gems. And I have them right here. These are um, coming up. They are a new product that will be available in November. And that's when I'm going to be mailing them out. They are so iridescent and pretty. And you will get them for free if you order um, using the host code with me and spend $50 in the month of October 2021. So I just wanted to point that out. And even if you place a smaller order of at least $15, you'll get one of my free with purchase tutorials. So. All right, I am going to read your comments and um, uh, see if there's anything. My comment is up there that I'm running a little late. Good morning, Dee and Birgit and Eleanor, Ellie. Uh, good morning, Ver Blue and Phyllis and Janine. Beatrice is from Panama. Wow. Good morning, Kristen. Um, uh, Dee said the ones with the ribbon, these ones, could hang on a tree as well. Yeah, they'd be make cute little decorations. Um, or if you have, have you ever seen those wire um, trees? You can get them at craft stores with um, that. Um, you can little, hang little ornaments on them. They they kind of sometimes look like a shape of a Christmas tree, but that would be great for hanging your little favors on. Um, and you can put that by the front door and just hang a whole bunch of these little guys on there. If someone comes to visit, you can hand them out. Kind of like trick or treating, but for Christmas. Yeah, why not, right? Um, let's see. D says, I like the closure on the first and the last one. The second one might be a little confusing. I don't think it would be too hard because I think the thing is, I probably made it seem more difficult than it is. Most people, when they see one of our projects, they open it, eat the candy, and they throw away our cute packaging. Yes, gas. I know that sounds awful, and I hate to point that out, but it is paper crafting. It brings joy for the moment and we don't have to hold on to it forever. Now, if you're a paper crafter, you might hold on to it forever. But just remember, people are going to look at the cute packaging and they're going to get joy out of that. And they might not have our same sensibility about keeping things forever. So once they open it, where is it? Once they open it, they might never want to close it again, but this is going to keep your box closed until you want people to have the candy, right? So this is not a bad option. It's just a different option. And a lot of times people are not going to keep your container. So I, you know, and it's not a lot of candy either. So it's not like people are going to be like, oh, I don't want to eat all those three kisses at once. They're going to be like eating all the three kisses or however many pieces of candy are in there. So just a different option. I just didn't want to have to slide this on and off for you because that was going to be um, I did it actually because I had this um, first one I created on a just a basic white uh, one as my experimental one so I actually did slide it on and off one and it wasn't terrible it just takes a moment but don't think for a minute most people are going to be sliding it back on it's going to go in the garbage I know that sounds terrible but you know just remember 
you are bringing joy to the moment and don't worry about what happens afterwards. Most people throw out their candy wrappers, whatever container afterwards, no matter how cute it is, unless it's made out of some long lasting material. You cannot wash paper um, and it doesn't usually stand up for the long, long term. So just remember that fact. Okay. I don't know why I needed to say that, but I did. All right. Will a gift card fit inside these purses? No. Um, they are too small. I tried it. Uh, unless people have smaller, tiny, tiny gift cards, um, not even my smallest gift card would fit. So not really a gift card um, holder, but great for candy or a really small gift, like maybe earrings um, or like some jewelry. Um, so it's just, it's really a small, small thing. Um, the measurements, um, <clears throat> the rough measurements um, from here to here, three inches, two inches and about three quarters of an inch. Um, so there's really not um, a ton of space because you know these corners right here probably will not hold anything. So you're really dealing with even a shorter distance than the three inches. Um, Dee says, I like the way the flower petals uh, interlock. So sweet. Um, yeah, the petals are really fun um, to interlock together. Um, and Ver Blue also said you could hang it on a Christmas tree as an ornament. Ha. Kristen says she loves dark chocolate. Kristen, you move next door to me and I'll buy a bag of candy and I'll take all the milk chocolate and you have all the dark chocolate and then um, we will uh, eat it and then we'll have to like walk a lot. You'll have to come walking with me every single day like I do in order to burn off the chocolate that we eat. So uh, you'll have to become an avid walker like me. Uh, good morning, Janine. Um, Janine says, these are really cute. I think this die set is just really good for so many variations. Definitely a value purchase. And it is easy to put together and you can decorate it up different ways. I just wanted to give you three different ways you could use it um, just right out of the box. The, these are not um, mind blowing designs. These are just designs that are, are very easy to mass produce. Uh, good morning, Nancy. Nancy, you can't find my email. There is a contact um, link down below. I can also tell you exactly what it is. Brenda Q stamps with an S on the end at gmail.com. Brenda Q stamps with an S at gmail.com if you need to find my email. And um, I'm trying to check my spam folder. Sometimes things go into my spam folder, so sometimes that takes a few days, but I, I hope um, you can get a hold of me or leave me um, a comment um, down um, in the video um, once more and let's see how we can connect, okay? Um, uh, Dee said, you could hang 25 of them on the metal tree for an advent calendar type project. Yes, that would be cute. Um, Kristen said I could handle walking in exchange for chocolate. Oh, well, you know, I wish I could have some of my stamping friends living right next to me. And then we would go walking every day. We go stamping. I used to have, um, my bestie, um, we became besties in, in Tennessee and she used to live across the street from me and we would go walking sometimes but the coolest thing about that is she also became a big paper crafter and i would just be able to walk across the street and show her something that i made and we'd be like oh yay that's so cute you know or she would show something that she had made and that that's just really fun and i don't have anyone like that right here right now and probably it's because i'm all online and i haven't done in-person classes i haven't cultivated that local stamping um, environment but that was so fun and i wish we could have that okay nancy i'm glad you got my email address and if you don't hear back from me then um 
part of the email address was wrong. So uh, just make sure that um, you can't reach out to me again because there would be no way I could guess how to get a hold of you. But um, also you can get a hold of me on Facebook as well um, if you're on there. Um, so all right guys i'm sorry i have talked so long i hope you learned from my little mistakes today the, that's always a good thing learn from my mistakes my project sheet will go out in the mail tomorrow on saturday so if you're not already on my email list make sure you get on it i will be back next week on tuesday on my facebook page at 10 a.m eastern and then back here on friday at 10 a.m eastern uh, for my kind of fun friday project all right guys have a great weekend take care bye bye